Look at you, hacker. A p- p- pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you r- run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? Hello everyone, it's Phil. Welcome to another GOG Tweet Guide. They release System Shock and two versions, the Classic Edition as well as the Enhanced Edition. And it's on sale now for around $8. Great price. This is a feature-packed tweak guide. Lots of information. I'm going to show you how to tweak the Classic Edition as well as the Enhanced Edition. The Enhanced Edition is not really much to tweak, but I have a few things I'd like to uh, discuss and that I felt like needed to be said. So the couple of things we're going to look at is definitely how to tweak the music, get general MIDI and some sound fonts going instead of FM music. The usual DOSBox tweaks, if you've watched my videos, you might be familiar with them. And later on, we look at the Enhanced Edition. So without further ado, let's start with this video. Enjoy. Okay, before we can begin, we have to install System Shock Classic Edition. Let's double click on it, and I'm just gonna quickly install it on my machine. Okay, so that has installed. Let's have a look in the Start menu and see what shortcuts we have. So here we go. We've got config that allows you to change the sound card and a few other things. And here we have two choices. We can run the floppy version, which is the main differences between the floppy and the CD version is the graphics are limited to 320 by 200 resolution and no speech. Whereas on the uh, this version, that's the CD version, you can improve the resolution to 640 by 480 and you have full audio speech throughout the game. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to tweak music. By default, System Shock Classic is configured for FM music. So I'm going to show you how to change the game to use general MIDI and then to further improve the music, you can use a sound font by installing virtual MIDI synth. But before I show you how to do it, I've got a comparison clip where we can listen to the FM music, the Microsoft GS Wavetable wave table synth, which is the default general MIDI device from Windows. And then using a sound font, we're going for uh, Proteus GM 1.1, which has been created by Deemster from Vogons. Um, he's a big fan of the original Creative Labs Wave Blaster, and he got inspired and made a sound font based on that. So in this video, I'm going to use that sound font. Okay, so it's obvious that general MIDI sounds a little bit better than FM. So I've got virtual MIDI synth installed. If you don't want to do that and you want to stick with the Microsoft GS Wavetable synth, then that's fine. You don't have to do this step. So I'm going to open the configuration utility and you can see the sound font is already loaded. Uh, Proteus, here it is. Press OK. And then you go to the start menu or programs, find your System Shock game and run config. Here we go. We're gonna go with English, then set up sound system, choose music, and instead of selecting Sound Blaster 16, change that to General MIDI. Auto setup done. And the digital card, I don't think we have to change anything here, but it doesn't hurt if you just make sure it's set to Sound Blaster 16. We can test the music here. Look at you, hacker. So that's all working fine. There are a couple of other options. Um, joystick, I set that to no, no joystick. The cutscene type, if you want to go have the cutscenes in 320 by 200 or 640 by 480. 
And there's one more option, notebook, game board, game board, check, don't check, I guess, don't check, I'm not using a notebook. And then press save and save settings and exit. Another thing that is really good about the release of the System Shock Classic Edition is that GOG supplied the full installation image. Um, so I'm just going to show you how that works. I'm going to use AnyBurn, which is basically a CD DVD burning software. And if we navigate to our GOG folder, go into System Shock Classic Edition CD, here it is. And that's a full ISO image. And what that means is you can burn this disk and it's a full DOS installation CD and you can take it to your DOS retro gaming PC if you've got one set up and play this on your 486 Pentium or whatever machine you've got. I've got a little picture here where you can see me testing the disk so that's really good. I really like that GOG has included the full disk image because it allows um, people to do all sorts of things. Some people want to play it in DOSBox, some people do want to have the option to play it on a real machine. So the more checkboxes uh, GOG ticks when they release the game, the better for the community and um, the better for everyone. Okay, the next part is configuring the DOSBox configuration. So we need to go to your GG Games folder, System Shock Classic Edition, and then under here, DOSBox Windows, we've got the config files and the config file we need is this one here. I'm just gonna snap this over here and put this back here. I might just increase the font size a little bit. Alrighty, let's start off with the graphics. Full screen res resolution true, that means the game will start up in uh, full screen mode. So you can set that to false if you wanna play in window resolution. Desktop resolution, that's not too bad. Um, I like hard, hard coding my native resolution of my system, which is 1920 by 1080. And for window resolution, I like to go with 800 by 600. Then you've got an option of output and the output options I recommend is one of these three, OpenGL, OpenGL non bilinear and direct draw. These two will give you a uh, sharper pixel look. So the pixels are very sharp, but you might see a bit of uh, issues with text because the pixels will be slightly different sizes. Um, OpenGL, a little bit softer look, but the text might be a little bit easier to read. I usually go with open GL. Then down here, expert ratio 2, that's good that UG is starting to uh, set that to true instead of false. Set the scaler to 3x. And CPU, they've set the CPU type to auto and max. I recommend you go with, uh, sorry, for the core, instead of auto, go with dynamic. Uh, this is quite a demanding game and in dynamic the performance is a little bit better. Cycles max, there is an issue with the at the end of the game where you have to defeat the uh, final boss. And if you're running the game on a computer that's too fast, uh, you basically can't win the game. So Cycle Max, Cycles Max will trigger that issue. So go with something fixed. I've tested around some, some settings and I will show you uh, how I test settings so you can do the same thing on your machine. For uh, If you play the floppy version with 320 by 200 resolution, a cycle speed of 30,000, 40,000 is fine. But if you play the 640 by 480 high resolution CD version, um, 100,000 is, is, is a setting that worked fine with me, maybe even higher. And change the cycle up, cycle down to 10,000. So it's easier to figure out um, what, the, what the correct speed is. I'm just gonna show you a video now uh, so you can see how I home in the uh, perfect cycle setting so you can apply this to your, to your machine. Okay, so we are in the game and the first thing you want to do is switch to window mode. So you press Alt, Enter. And you can see the cycle speed up the top. It's 100,000 now. And if you hold down the Control key, so Control 11, you can reduce the cycles. And if you hold Control F F12, you can increase the cycles. And what we're going to do, we're just going to slow it down to around 20,000. And then have a play in the game and see what it feels like. See, it's, it's already lagging a little bit. So if we slow it down further to 10,000 cycles here, it's now lagging quite a bit. So if we boost that to around 30,000, then the game actually plays fine. Um, and the speed is, is quite smooth there. Now let's switch that to high resolution. So I'm just going to go to video, video mode, uh, 640 by 480. There we go. Return. 
and we can see that it's now lagging quite a lot. So for high resolution mode, we need a lot more cycles. So I'm gonna boost it to, let's go with 80,000. Let's see how that plays. And that's already looking pretty smooth. So we just give it a few more, 100,000, and the game is now pretty smooth. And that's how I test uh, my games and, and home in the cycle speed. And you should do the same thing with your setting because my settings might not apply to your uh, system, operating system, and, and whatever configuration you're running. Okay, we continue. There's not much to change here. We can boost the sample rate a little bit because most sound cards now use a 48,000 sample rate. And we do the same thing for the sound blaster down here. And that's really it. Now we just have to go file, save, cross it off, and the game should now work uh, pretty well. So we're just gonna run the game and check out that everything is fine. New Atlanta. So here we are, we've got a nice full screen image with the correct aspect ratio. So we're just gonna start a new game. And then we just gotta once again go into the options and change the resolution. Hang on, wrong menu, it's under video. Video mode 64480. Return, and there you go. So that was the tweak art for the classic edition of System Shock from GOG, improving the sound, improving the graphics, and avoiding the speed bug at the end of the game uh, where you can't beat the game because of a timing issue. Okay, so in this part, we're looking at the enhanced edition of System Shock. So not only did they release the original CD release of System Shock, which is the classic edition, they also did an enhanced edition. And I'm just gonna start the installation. So double click on your installer, and we're just gonna install it. And in the meantime, I can explain a few things. So a lot of people have wondered how that's possible, you know, because the game, uh, the System Shock Enhanced Edition runs, it's in Windows, it doesn't use DOSBox, but it's not an emulator, it's not a, a source port either, it seems to be some kind of a, a wrapper, so either way, it's just another bonus to this release, so don't see it um, uh, as a negative thing, see it as a bonus and uh, as an addition. However, there are a few um, issues and some concerns that I want to, to raise. Usually I don't really comment too much on it, but in, the, in this case, I noticed a few things that and I just wanna put in my, my five cents. So um, definitely something you want to keep uh, checking is the forum. So if you go to community, you can type in uh, a game here and you'll get to the support uh, community forum thread. And there's lots of interesting information here. One form thread we, we will be using is this one here. Uh, it's a sticky, the System Shock Enhanced Edition Mini FAQ. But I'd like you to have a look at this one. The System Shock Enhanced Edition crashes two seconds after this intro started and 151 um, replies. So this is really a hot topic. So I didn't really have issues on my computer, but a lot of people do. And uh, what concerns me a little bit is the, the people that uh, helped make the enhanced version possible. They are very engaged in the forum, but they come across as a little bit, uh, how should I put it? Um, like lacking a bit of people skills. And, and, and they need to realize that people purchased, uh, spent money on this game, yeah? And you expect it to work, yeah? And if it doesn't work, you get a bit frustrated and that's normal, you know? And picking fights and argue, arguments with, with uh, upset customers, you know, is not really uh, professional. And they kind of represent, representing GUG because they're involved in this whole project. So it makes GUG look a little bit bad and unprofessional. So I do recommend that they maybe communicate um, a bit of a uh, etiquette to those people just so um, that the, the language and the tone is, is a little bit more friendly because GUG could lose customers uh, over that. Anyway, so that's out of the way. So. After installing the game, there is one patch that we need to install. I'm not quite sure why they haven't included it. So we have to go to the System Shock Enhanced Edition Mini FAQ and go to the first page. And there's lots of information here, but we're just gonna assume that we're not running into issues. Um, if you are running into issues, 
check the thread because um, there are all sorts of um, fixes or suggestions of fixes. Also, I recommend that you check if there's a new download version available because they might be releasing an, uh, an updated executable. Okay, we need this mod here, the enhanced text mod, because what you find is that the text on the screen doesn't match the speech. So this will fix it. So you click on the link and it takes you to this website and you download this file. So let me just close that. I've put it on the desktop. Let's open it. There's a readme file. So let's have a look at what we need to do. So it says here, we need to go to this folder, shock slash data. So let's open an explorer. Let's go to GOG games enhanced and let's have a look where it is. Shock data. That one cyber. Maybe it's under res. There you go, data. There it is. So they recommend to make uh, a backup. So we're just gonna control C, control V. There's our backup copy. And now we're gonna copy that other file across this one here and overwrite the old file. Okay, we can cross that off. We can cross this off and we go back to here. And there should be a readme file here, this one here. And we're just gonna go over this together. So it mentions there's high, re high resolution support um, up to 1024 by 768. And there's also a 854 by 480 widescreen mode. In the forums, I've picked up that it's not recommended to go higher than that. You can configure a configuration file, but they recommend to stick with these two resolutions. The game supports uh, mouse look, and you can toggle that with the E button. It's basically switching between 3D view, being able to look around, and um, an inventory style mode where you can pick up objects on the screen. E, by default, it switches off the uh, 3D, the free look, the 3D mouse look when you're picking up objects, and you can change that behavior in the config file. So there's a config file, controls.config, this one here. So let's open it up in Notepad. There you go. And here you can tweak some of the settings. I didn't really have to, but if you want to, you can dig into here and uh, have all sorts of options at your disposal. Um, some original game bugs have been fixed. Alrighty, so let's cross it off and hopefully that is good to go. In terms of music, just like in the classic edition, the same thing applies install a virtual MIDI uh, synth and a sound font to improve the music in the game. So we're just gonna run the enhanced version and see if everything plays fine. So we've got a aspect ratio seems to be correct. Mostly it's a little bit, little bit too wide, but that's not a big deal. New Atlanta. So music is working. Let's start uh, a new game. Okay, so here the aspect ratio is fine. It plays smoother. Um, it doesn't seem to have as much or any tearing like in the DOSBox version. So we're just gonna press escape and under video and video mode, you'll find different resolutions here. So if you select this one, you get like a widescreen view. Um, but some of the heads up display in elements are a little bit stretched, so just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna stick with the 1024 by 768. And that's really it, that's the enhanced version. So on my machine, it, it's working fine. I didn't have any issues, but I did pick up that a lot of people did. And that's that's a little bit, a little bit disappointing, but hopefully GG gets on top of it. And um, with those other people involved in this uh, enhanced version, Hopefully they're releasing a few updates and some uh, bug fixes. And that's it for me. If you want to continue getting updates on my channel and more videos like this, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Any comments, feedbacks down below, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think about this release? What do you think about the Enhanced Edition? Uh, share your thoughts. I'm always eager to, to hear from you. And hit the like button if you liked it. And that's it. Have a great day.